in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Adam and Eve's mis mission was to expand God's kingdom. After the fall into sin, the world changed its state. But God's vision of mission did not change. Today, our Father is still calling us to go ye therefore. Like we were reminded yesterday, whilst there is still time, the Lord is saying, go ye therefore. Today, leading us this morning is Pastor M. Maforo. Over to you, Mfundisi, and may the good Lord bless you. Thank you. Amen. Uh, praise be to God. We want to thank God for yet another time that he has given us where we can worship and bless his holy name. Pray this morning, just before we do that, um, I want us to take or to concentrate uh, on a particular subject of scripture uh, that uh, blesses my soul. And I do hope uh, that it will bless your soul as well. I'm in the book of First Kings, uh, chapter 18. First Kings, chapter 18. And we're going to read the last portion of chapter 18. As a church, we believe in the ministration of the three Elijahs. And uh, we believe that uh, Elijah of the original or the historical Elijah, which was the Elijah as we read in the book of Kings. And then we also believe uh, in the second Elijah who is John the Baptist. And we believe in the third Elijah, who is uh, also divided into three, the medieval Elijah, the prophet Elijah, which is Ellen G. White. And then finally, uh, the church or the remnant church as the third Elijah, which is you and me. And so there's so many lessons that we can learn from Elijah uh, that help us, especially in our day to day. And uh, without wasting much time, there's something that happens to Elijah, which I thought I should share with us today, just before we pray. So in the book of First Kings chapter 18, we're gonna be reading First uh, Kings chapter 18, verse from verse 41, and we will read up to verse 45. Um, I'm going to pray just before I read the text. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning as we gather so that we can pray. We want to ask you in a very special way that you minister to us so that we may be saved. As we hold on to the reins of prayer, we pray your spirit and your presence be with us. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As we commune with you, may we surely fill the fellowship and the presence of you, O oh Lord, in our day to day and in the rest of the day, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now watch what it says in verse 41. It says there, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Verse 42, So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. Verse 43, and said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. Verse 44, and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud of the, out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stoppeth thee not. Verse 45, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with the clouds 
and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. 46, the last verse, and he, the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. May God bless the reading of his word, amen. Now, I want you to watch and notice something there as we talk about mission. You see, God, God's purpose when he created humanity, it was so that he can extend his kingdom upon the earth. That's why when we pray and we say that our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we want the kingdom of God to come here down on earth so that the will of God can be done here on earth. So every time when we do the will of God, it is an extension of the kingdom of God upon the earth. But you see, the extension of the kingdom of God upon the earth, then it means that the enemy or the devil then loses territory because this is the place where he has come to take dominion. And so what he does, he will fight the kingdom of God. He will fight anything that has got to do with the will of God upon here on earth, which makes humanity struggle, which makes humanity face a lot of trials, uh, temptations, and difficulties. But you see, when Jesus came, he came so that he can conquer, so that he can defeat the works of darkness, so that he can defeat the enemy so that the will of God can be done upon the earth without any challenges, without any problems. But then if you look closely, you then see that sometimes we struggle when it comes to the performance of the will of God. And here is Elijah, and I think you will understand this with me. As we go out there to witness for God, as we go out there uh, to minister for God, there's a whole lot of challenges that we face. Uh, it could be personally, it could be in the family, it could be at work, it could be in different other places. I don't know where. But as we go out there, I want you to notice that, you know, I've seen this especially with myself, especially when I go out there uh, to do God's, uh, God's work. I've always experienced and I've seen this happening. Here is Elijah. Elijah goes before Ahab. And he says, look, Ahab, he doesn't even pray. He just says, Ahab, there is not going to be any rain except by my word. And then he leaves the palace. He leaves and he goes. He simply declares with the words of his mouth, he declares that there is not going to be any rain. And by his word, indeed, there was no rain for over three years. There was no dew. There was no rain. There was nothing. There were no clouds. For over three years, God seemingly confirmed his word immediately, there and there. He leaves. He goes by the brook, and then the brook dries up. The ravens came, give him food, until God says, look, you need to go to the widow woman. He goes. This is Elijah. He goes to the widow woman. And when he gets there, the widow woman says to, her, to, to him, look, I don't have any food. But then he says, look, surely by the Lord God whom I stand before, they will, your, your food is not going to run out. And the woman believes. Elijah, I want you to notice, Elijah doesn't even pray. He says, according to the God whom I stand before, your food is not going to run out. And that word of confirmation or declaration was confirmed immediately for the remainder of the three and a half years. And the miracle of God was there. Watch. After the three years, he goes on, to, on top of Mount Carmel. When he gets there, he doesn't even struggle. In fact, he gets there and then he's, he even mocks the prophets of Baal. That whatever you guys are praying for, you don't, you, you, your God is not going to answer you. When it was his chance, he calls all the nation of Israel together to come closer to him. And then he makes a very simple prayer. And he prays for the nation of Israel. And guess what? When he prays for them, God answers that simple prayer. 
and fire comes down from heaven and consumes the bullock, the water, and everything else. Now, I want you to watch this because this is the way it gets most important. And this is where I want us to have a prayer point right there. Elijah, who is this very powerful, when it comes to, 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 to praying for other people and for other things, God seemingly answers the prayers. And sometimes Elijah doesn't need to pray. He simply declares a word and that word is answered immediately. But when it came to his own personal prayer, when he wanted God to show up for himself, he says when he goes there and when he wants rain to come, the Bible says he prays, he puts his head between his knees and guess what? Nothing happens. He prays a second time, nothing happens. He prays a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth time and nothing happens happens. I don't know if you understand or if you are there with me this morning. Most of the times when we go out there to do God's word, to go to do God's work, it's almost immediate that God answers prayers. For those people that you pray for, God seemingly answers immediately. Sometimes you don't even need to pray. But when you go out there and you do God's work, it's as if God answers immediately and confirms his word immediately. I've prayed for people, by the way, that have been sick and they got healed immediately. I've gone out there to pray for God to perform a miracle, to, go, to do a breakthrough for his children. And the breakthrough comes almost immediately. But you know, sometimes when I pray for myself or when I want God to show up on my own behalf, it seems like God doesn't show up almost immediately. It seems like he waits. He waits for the first time. He, I pray the first time he doesn't show up. I pray the second time he doesn't show up. I pray the third he doesn't show up. The fourth he doesn't show up. And sometimes I feel like giving up because it's almost as if God doesn't show up. But you know what I've learned? <laughs> when you go through God's work in his mission, what I've learned is that we don't need to let go of God's hand, no matter how long he tarries to come. The God whom we serve, surely he will come up. And I call this phenomenon the small or the little cloud experience. The little cloud experience. There are little cloud experiences in my life that I've seen God show up. And sometimes I laugh and I say, I knew you were going to show up. I don't know what is what was taking you so long. And I can almost hear God say in my heart, you know, I know I was going to show up. I was just going to test you and see how patient you have been. And I don't know why God does that with us. I don't know why God tests us. But I want to encourage you that even you, when you go and do God's work, you will experience what I call the little cloud experiences. Sometimes don't wait until you see the biggest cloud. The minute when you see the smallest of the clouds, it is God already answering your prayer. I would rather see the smallest cloud being an answer from God than to see the big clouds and the heavy wind that does not come from God. Because big clouds do not always mean that it's going to rain. I'll say it again. You can even put this on your status this morning. Big clouds don't always mean that it's going to rain. Okay, so there are moments in our lives where we experience biggest cloud moments. But guess what? Alas, it's not going to rain. And we wonder, but what happened? Everything was promising. I want to challenge you this morning. Wait on God for those small little clouds. And remember, little is much when God is in it. So when we go to do God's work, watch out for those small little clouds. No small little clouds come in the nature of uh, a smile from a child, you know, a smile from a workmate, you know, a, a ray of hope from, 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 from a little profit in your own uh, frontline business that you're doing. Those small little clouds, as you, as you experience them, as you see them, I want you to know that is where God is. I want us to pray and ask God 
to show us the small little clouds, not to miss them, but to see them even as we go out in prayer. We're then going to pray and then ask God to help us not mismanage the small little cloud experience. Let us pray together as we are about to, to break out. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. As we get into a season of prayer, I pray that we may be able to notice and not to let go of the small little cloud experiences. We know sometimes it takes longer and our answers may take longer than we expect, but we know that God, you are never late. You are always on time. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Over back to our host.